Some of the most classic songs that have brought great joy to many have devastating stories behind them. Unfortunately, some of these songs were performed by artists who died under the most tragic circumstances. As much joy as these songs have brought to generations of people, there was a tinge of sadness behind them due to the heartbreaking demise of the singers who performed them. Here's a look at R&B singers who died under the most tragic circumstances. Donny Hathaway. On January the 13th, 1979, a gruesome discovery was made in front of the Essex House Hotel in New York City. On the sidewalk was the body of legendary singer Donny Hathaway. Just hours earlier, he was in a music studio working on his next album. It was a tragic ending for one of the most talented artists of that era. He was just 33 years of age. Donny Hathaway is known for classics such as The Ghetto, This Christmas, A Song For You and duets with Roberta Flack such as Where Is The Love. He has a solid legacy in R&B and although he was only with us for a short while, he made music that permanently impacted the lives of many. Donny was born in 1945 in Chicago, Illinois. He began singing in church and was actually in the choir with his grandmother. He spent the majority of his childhood in St. Louis, Missouri. Donny was actually raised by his grandmother. She was a professional gospel singer and she exposed Donny to music, getting him piano lessons at a very young age. He showed a lot of promise musically when he was a kid, but he was also extremely bright and eventually ended up winning a scholarship to study fine arts at Howard University. That's where he met his wife, Eulala. And he also met fellow singer Roberta Flack. The two of them would later go on to be label mates at Atco Records and make several duets together. As well as a gifted musician, Donny was an accomplished songwriter and producer. He also played instruments for other artists. He produced for Curtis Mayfield and Aretha Franklin. He released his debut album in 1970 called Everything Is Everything, which had the breakout single The Ghetto Part 1. His second, self-titled album consisted mainly of covers, but his third album in 1972 was an album of duets with Roberta Flack. This album had the most commercial success. Their song, Where Is The Love, did well not just in the R&B charts, but in the pop charts, selling over a million copies. His 1972 live album was labelled one of the best live albums ever recorded. The song, This Christmas, from the Soul Christmas compilation album has been covered numerous times and is probably one of the most famous Christmas songs behind Mariah Carey's All I Want For Christmas. It was certified as a modern Christmas standard. Early in his career, Donnie married Eulayla Vaughan. The couple had two daughters together, Layla and Kenya. But at the height of his career, Donnie began to deal with mental health issues. He suffered from severe depression at times and began to exhibit unusual behaviour that concerned his family and friends. He went to his doctor and was eventually diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Symptoms include paranoia, hallucinations and hearing voices. Donnie was prescribed various medications to manage the condition. This was in the 70s, so treatment was not as advanced as it is today. He had to commit to taking 14 different medications twice daily. For a while, it appeared to be working, but at times he would forget to keep up with his medications. As you can imagine, he was a busy performer and anyone would find it hard to keep up with taking so many pills. Plus, it's not uncommon for people with such conditions to ease up on their medication once they start to feel better and more in control. They may experience a false sense of security and think that they don't need to continue with their medication. In the end, Donnie stopped taking his medication altogether. Donnie's 1973 album, Extension of a Man, would be his last. It garnered hits such as Love, Love, Love and I Love You More Than You'll Ever Know. Extension of a Man was filled with love songs, but also songs with haunting thought-provoking ballads such as Someday We'll All Be Free. After this album, Donnie would not release any more music for another five years. 
the years between 1973 and 1977 was when Donnie's mental health rapidly declined. He was hospitalised several times in an attempt to get him the help he needed. His relationships became greatly affected too. He fell out with Roberta Flack and they didn't speak for several years. Speaking to Jet Magazine, she said, I tried to reach out to Donnie. That's how we managed to do the song we did last year. I felt this need because I didn't know what to do. I couldn't save him. I knew he was sick, but I knew when he sat down at the piano and sang for me, it was like it was eight or nine years ago. They reunited for the song, The Closer I Get To You, in 1978. They recorded their parts separately because Donnie's condition made it hard for him to travel and Roberta was based in Chicago. The Closer I Get To You had great success. It went straight to number one in the R&B charts and two in the pop charts. Donnie was not just big in R&B, he was huge in popular music too. Sadly, Donnie's marriage also broke down. He then began another relationship and had a third daughter, Donita. His girlfriend also had a hard time dealing with his mental health issues. She said when he was on his medication, things were fine. But when he was off it, she could only deal with him for a couple of days at a time. One of the most beautiful songs, You Were Meant For Me, was released later that year, just before his sudden death. The song would later be covered by his daughter, Grammy Award winner Layla Hathaway. In 1979, while working on another duet album, Donnie was in the studio with prominent producers Eric Mercury and James Matum. They would later describe him as displaying erratic behaviour. He was singing fine, but he was acting very strangely. They said he seemed paranoid and delusional. He feared, quote, that white people were trying to kill him. He said something about his brain being connected to a machine and that he feared others were trying to steal his sound. Eric decided to end the studio session early and sent everyone home. Donnie was staying at the Essex House Hotel in New York City, a luxury hotel on Central Park South. His room was on the 15th floor. Shortly after 11, on a Saturday night, a Midtown North police station in New York City received a call about a man who had fallen or jumped from a 15th floor window at Essex House. The man was Donny Hathaway. It was reported that Donny had jumped from the balcony and was believed to have taken his own life. Although, till this day, some question if it was simply an accident. No notes were found in Donny's suite, which was double locked from the inside. His suitcases, music tapes, sheet music and recorder were all intact and neatly laid out. Everything appeared normal except for his bedroom window. It was open despite it being a cold and rainy night and the safety glass had been removed and placed on the bed. Some of Donnie's friends do not believe that the singer deliberately took his life. Many say he was enjoying his success and would never do that. It's hard for some to comprehend him choosing to do that when he had so much to live for. He would open up the window and stick his head out and vocalize. I would just like to think that he just fell. Donnie's passing was a huge loss to the industry and his artistic absence is still felt to this day. He left behind three daughters, all of whom are continuing his legacy. Layla is a phenomenal artist and a 10-time Grammy nominee and five-time winner. She has a deep vocal range and is famous for her ability to sing chords. That's the rare ability to sing several notes at once. This was displayed in her performance of the song Something with Snarky Puppy. Speaking of her famous father, Layla said, I'm his daughter and that's the truth of who I am every day. When I was 15 and then 20, I didn't get why people were asking me how I felt about him and his music. But then I turned 25, I began to understand. Like my father, I want to leave a legacy of music that makes people really feel something, whether it be happiness, sadness, grief or heartache. I also want them to appreciate my humour, which I know can be difficult to interpret in a song. 
Donnie's wife, Yulela, is an accomplished singer and musician in her own right. She also attended Howard University, where she majored in voice. Then she obtained an advanced degree in voice at the Manhattan School of Music. They are an extremely talented family. Layla's sister Kenya is a session singer and backing vocalist on American Idol. Donnie inspired many artists of today. Tupac featured a Donnie lookalike in the video for I Ain't Mad At Ya. And the late Amy Winehouse said he was her favorite singer of all time and shouted him out on what would become her posthumous album, Lioness Hidden Treasures. Stevie Wonder said, when Donnie sings any song, he owns it. Justin Timberlake called him the best singer of all time. Eulayla said, there are made musicians and there are born ones. And Donnie happened to have been a born musician. Are you familiar with Donnie Hathaway's music? What is your favorite Donny Hathaway song? He really was a rare talent. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Share your thoughts below. Like and subscribe for weekly-ish videos. And don't forget to click the bell for more.